Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. So let me ask you a question. When Jesus says in Matthew 24, warning about the end times deception, the great apostasy, he says that there would be false prophets and false Christs. Now, what does he mean by that? What does Jesus mean by false Christs? This episode of Fighting for the Faith is going to look into that concept because if you think it is merely somebody claiming to be Jesus, that's not all that Jesus is warning us about. So, it, let, in fact, let's do this. Let me uh, let me open up my desktop, uh, whirl that up, and head on over to my Bible program, and uh, let's take a look at uh, what Jesus says here. See, talking about the last times. So then, if anyone says to you, "Look, here is the Christ," or "There he is," don't believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you beforehand. So when Jesus talks about false Christ, the uh, Greek word here is pseudo Christoi. Pseudo, you know, like false. And Christoi, uh, Christ. But what does the word Christ mean? Now, obviously, uh, the Bible uses it like a surname for Jesus, Jesus the Christ or Jesus Christ, but Christoi means something. And, and let, me, let me explain to you. It's actually Christos. And we're going to go into the Old Testament and kind of show you where the concept of a Christ comes from, and you're going to be familiar with how the words work. So Psalm 2 is a great place to go, and here's what it says. Why do the nations rage? Why do the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. So you'll note here, this is a psalm wondering, musing, if you would, God wondering why people so vainly, stupidly, you know, take counsel together against the Lord's anointed. Well, the word for anointed here in Psalm 2, verse 2, is the Hebrew word, and you'll be familiar with it, Mashiach. That's where we get the word Messiah from. And note it says against his anointed. And when we look at the, uh, the Septuagint, this is the uh, Greek translation of the Old Testament. Psalm 2, when we get to that part, it says, kata tu Christu autu. Here you see the word Christos, all right, against his anointed Christos. So what is a Christos? A Christos is an anointed one. And so when somebody claims to have a special anointing, they are claiming to be a Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that they're claiming to be the Christ, but when Jesus gives us his warning in Matthew chapter 24, for pseudo Christoi, false Christ and false prophets will arise. He's warning us against people who are false anointed ones. And so if you don't know that the word Christos means anointed one, and it comes from the Hebrew concept of Mashiach, the anointed one, the Messiah, then when people talk about having special anointings and things like this, you're not going to see them for what they are. Because People claiming these anointings today, and there are plenty of examples of that. I'll give you a couple. Uh, one will be a little bit easier for Christians, the other one challenging. But the idea here is, is that when you recognize that to be to claim to have a special anointing makes you a Christos, the question then comes up, are you a true Christ? Or a false Christ. Now, if you've ever heard the argument, well, 
Well, you know, because it's Jesus warned us that there will be false prophets in the last days, this would be a useless, a useless, uh, you know, warning if there weren't true prophets also. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Using that same logic, Jesus warns that in the last days there would be false Christs. Does that mean that there are true Christs running around the church today? You, you see, using that same logic, this is the logic of Bethel and other places, well, we have to claim, well, there's got to be within the church people who are true Christs. No, the logic doesn't work. In fact, anybody claiming to be a Christoi, a Christ, a Christos, or a Messiah today is a false anointed one. So the question is, what does that mean? So let's do a little bit of work on this. And we're going to start with something I'll consider to be a little less controversial, at least for Christians. Have you ever heard of the Unification Church? And I put church in quotes there. The Moonies, yeah, the uh, the late Reverend Sung Young Moon, who claimed to be the second advent of Jesus Christ. His late wife claimed to be the Holy Spirit incarnate. You familiar with these folks? Well, their daughter is still running around the landscape, and she claims to be the only begotten daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I it's it's you know, you sit there and go, whoa, that's crazy. I agree. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch part of a video, a promotional video for an event from a few years ago, and a uh, a so-called Christian pastor is promoting this woman as the mother of peace and the only begotten daughter. And we'll listen to his anointing talk here to see what kind of uh, thing he's teaching. But, uh, you know, since these people are not Christian by any stretch of the imagination, and anybody who claims to be the second advent of Christ, well, that would be Sung, Sung Young Moon. He's one of the false Christ who claim to be the Christ, and his wife claiming to be the incarnation of the Holy Spirit. They're a false Christ and a false Holy Spirit. You get the idea. And their daughter now running around the landscape claiming to be the only begotten daughter uh, she, she's as, you know, she's as phony as a Bill Clinton $3 bill as well. You, you get the idea. But let's watch a little bit of this promotional video. Who is the mother of peace? Hmm. Dr. Hak Jam Han Moon, apparently. She's bringing... All the people of the world together for peace. Oh, wow. Kind of reminds me of you know, what Jesus say that in the last days, or scripture says that they'll be saying, peace, peace, and destruction will come on them suddenly. <laughs> so Madison Square Garden. And you got to note here, this is going to look like, uh, you know, like a Hillsong conference. <laughs> They're packing out the uh, Madison Square Garden. When I arrived, to my astonishment, I was just amazed at the amount of people, the diversity in the room. Um, you can actually feel the love and the peace in the room. Y you can feel the love and the peace. Can you feel the love? So this was back on uh, July 15, 2017. So, I mean, four years ago. Celebrating as one family under God. So apparently it was a multicast. Nassau, Los Angeles, Madison Square Gardens, Vegas even. Wow, they stopped their gambling to come together for world peace. And even Washington, D.C. Mother's interpretation. Now, listen to this fellow, Pastor Noel of City of Refuge Church. What's he doing promoting this woman who claims to be the only begotten daughter of God? So, so listen to his, uh, his speech. Let's listen carefully to what he says here, because, I mean, th we've, we've heard, uh, well, nonsense like this from many people in the NAR. But in this particular case, they're talking about a woman who is a full-on cult leader. <laughs> interpretation of her call. 
mother's interpretation of her calling. And there's Sung Young Moon and uh, the, you know, his daughter. She seems like she's aging to me. It's not within what we call the norm. It's not normal. Her interpretation of her calling, it's not normal. Mother's interpretation of her calling is that she is the only begotten daughter. So her interpretation of her calling is that she is the only begotten daughter. Move over, Jesus. You have a sister now. That's her interpretation of her calling. Her interpretation. But you don't judge a tree by its branches. Right. So you don't judge a tree by its branches. So, I mean, we can tell the, where he's going to go here. He's going to literally twist scripture to basically say, well, the fruit's there. So, Jesus, move over. You've got a sister. And you don't judge a tree by its leaves. Right. You judge a tree by its fruit. I hope all of you unite with me, she says, and become sparks that light up this dark, uh, this dark world and guide people to God's bosom. This has nothing to do with Christianity. And there's nobody in here that can deny the significance of the fruit that we have seen exhibited by. So he's inspected all the fruit, and it's true. Jesus has now a sister. Jesus is the only begotten son of God, and this woman, the daughter of Sung Young Moon, she's the only begotten daughter. Uh. Her response to her calling. <laughs> I just care what you do. I don't care what you call yourself. I just care what you do. And she's brought all of us together to tell the world that we can get together. We can have peace. And we can overcome the difficulties in the world because we're anointed to do it. There it is. So we can overcome the difficulties of the world because we are... What? Anointed to do it. He's claiming, via this woman who claims to be the only begotten daughter, move over, Jesus, uh, that, um, that we are anointed to bring peace to the world. Anybody who believes this would be a pseudo-Christos. Together they would be pseudo-Christoi, false Christ, of the kind that Jesus warned us about. Now, the reason this is less controversial for Christians is because Christians with any biblical sense would recognize that woman ain't the only begotten daughter of God and Jesus doesn't have a sister. Uh, you know, so the Trinity is now turned into a quadrinity? I don't think so. But all of that being said, let's do a little bit of work now with the claims, uh, all of these special claims for anointings that occur within, well... The NAR and other places. If we go to Patricia King's channel, we just type in the word anointing. You'll note that uh, there, apparently there's an ox anointing. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's a, the secrets of the seer anointing. And so if you have the ox anointing, that would make you an ox Christos. Uh, if you have the seer anointing, you, you, are, you, you are claiming to have... Uh, an anointing. You are a Christos. Then there's the how to grow in the seer anointing, the watchman anointing. And you'll note the Greek word for anointing is Christos. The Hebrew is Mashiach. The Hannah anointing. Lots of anointings out there. And anyone claiming to operate in these things are false Christs because the Greek word Christos means to be an anointed one. You see the idea here? So, I mean, let's let's just do a little bit of work. So here, here's uh, some of the video on the secrets of the seer anointing. Well, welcome. I'm excited about today's program because... 
Now, you'll note, I sped this up just a little bit. And so if she seems like she's had too much caffeine, it's due to the fact that I sped her up just a tiny bit. We have Jamie Galloway with us, who is a seer. And you are teaching about seeing. You're helping the body of Christ learn to see. You're activating seers. And you are the author of a brand new book, Secrets of the Seer. And you'll want to get this for sure, uh, because it's got 10 keys in it on how to activate your seer anointing. 10 keys on how to activate your Seer what? Anointing. So if you claim to have the seer anointing, you are claiming to be a Christ. That would make you a pseudo Christoi, one of the ones that Christ warned us about. But let's take a look at this ox anointing, shall we? Because uh, I think this is the one that is the most interesting. And uh, let me let me uh, let me refresh this because we today were having... I Pro yeah let's let's in fact let's let's listen to today what she says. I have a message on the ox anointing. The ox anointing. She has a message on the ox anointing. Now, I just so happen to know that she doesn't get to the message about the ox anointing until the two minute, 21 second marks. But let's listen. And in. I want to share with you an experience I had years ago uh, when we were doing a event. It was in 1999. We we're doing an event called Apostolic Oil. And um, in preparation for this event, I went into the church ahead of time uh, to pray with some other intercessors. And during that prayer time, I felt the Spirit of God come on me. And all of a sudden, I, I fell down on my knees and onto the floor with my hands in front of me. So in other words, I was on all fours sort of thing. And I started feeling in my body like I was no longer a human. I felt like I was me, but I was an ox. Instead of a human, I was an ox. So apparently this is an anointing that yeah other people can have too. You, you, you too can have the ox anointing. This makes Patricia King a pseudo Christoi, a false Christ. This is a non-biblical false anointing. We'll take a look at a biblical text here in a minute, but uh, let's let her spin this out some more, shall now, we? Now, in the Bible, in Revelation uh, 4 and 5, we see a picture of what John saw when he went up into heaven. One of the things he saw were creatures, four living creatures. One uh, had the face of a man, another the lion, another the eagle, but then there was the ox, the face of the ox. And where in Scripture are we led to believe that we can receive an ox anointing just because John saw four living creatures, one of them like an ox. These are the four presentations of Jesus. I believe that the ox, known as the servant, is actually a type. What we see is the symbol of the apostolic anointing. So the ox anointing is a symbol of the apostolic, what did she call it? Anointing. Uh-huh. And um, what happened to me that day is, I, as I fell down on the, the, the ground and I started feeling like an ox, I felt compelled to start walking. And I was in a church building, but I was inside of a vision. Even though I was in the church building, I, 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 I didn't sense the building. I sensed that I was in a field because I was in like this encounter. And I was an ox walking through the field and I could feel that I was pulling a plow and that the ground I was plowing through was very, very hard. I could feel the resistance of it as I was pulling the plow through. And uh, the ground was very hard. It was hard to pull it. And I knew though, I had this knowing that I was to till up the field so that seed could be planted. And I knew that my master needed it done. So there I was on the floor, feeling like an ox, pulling this plow through this field and the really tough soil. Mm -hmm. And then um, I heard audible voices start laughing at me and mocking me. And they were saying things like, oh, look at that dirty old ox. Oh, look at that dirty old thing. You know, and then I could. I, apparently she went off her meds. Um, so are we to expect an ox anointing? Well, let's take a look at a, at a biblical text that deals with kind of a similar theme. And that is, is that you'll note that within the NAR and people coming out of the uh, Toronto so-called blessing and the, uh, the Brownsville revival... <laughs> Put that in quotes too. Uh, you know, there, there there are examples after examples, and you know, you can find them on the internet of people, you know, getting down on all fours, barking like dogs, behaving like animals. Well, Scripture doesn't describe that as an anointing. When a human being is uh, made to be like an animal, 
It's an act of God's judgment. So here's uh, Daniel chapter four to kind of explain. And I don't know if you knew this. I, I've said this in the past on previous installments of Fighting for the Faith, but it's been some time since I've covered this text. Uh, Daniel chapter four is a letter written by King Nebuchadnezzar, dictated to Daniel, and recorded in scripture, and it's written to you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's, I'm actually looking at your mail here uh, because I can see who it's written to. And so I want you to consider uh, what is said here by King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar says, To all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth. If you are on planet earth and you are a people living in a nation and you speak a language, this is written to you. And here's what Nebuchadnezzar says to you. Peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house, prospering in my palace, I saw a dream that made me afraid. As I lay in bed, the fancies and the visions of my head alarmed me. So I made a decree that all the wise men of Babylon should be brought before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the, mag the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, the astrologers came in, and I told them the dream, but they could not make known to me its interpretation." At last, Daniel came in before me, he who was named Belshazzar after the name of my God, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And I told him the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you and that no mystery is too difficult for you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I saw in their interpretation. So the visions of my head as I lay in bed were these. I saw... And behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong, and its top reached to heaven. And it was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and in it was, the food, was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of heaven lived in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in bed, and behold, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, chop down the tree and lop off its branches, strip it of its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts flee from under it and the birds from its branches, but leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his mind be changed from a man's and let a beast's mind be given to him. Keep that in mind. Okay, that's going to come up in the interpretation. So let seven periods of time pass over him. And the sentence is by the decree of the watchers, the decision by the word of the holy ones, to the end that the living may know that the Most High rules the kingdoms of men and gives it to whom he will and sets over it the lowliest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, saw, and you, O Belshazzar, tell me the interpretation, because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. So then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was dismayed for a while, and his thoughts alarmed him. The king answered and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation for your enemies. The tree you saw, which grew and became strong so that its top reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth, whose leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and in which was food for all, under which beasts of the field found shade, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens lived. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. Your greatness has grown and reaches to heaven and your dominion to the ends of the earth. And because the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump of its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and of bronze in the tender grass of the field, let him be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven periods of time pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. It is a decree of the Most High, 
which has come upon my lord, the king, that you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox. And you shall be wet with the dew of heaven, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. And as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. All of this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, and at the end of the 12 months, at the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men, and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar, he was driven from among men, ate grass like an ox, his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, his kingdom endures from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. And he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty, my splendor, it returned to me. My counselors and my lords sought me. And I was established in my kingdom. And I, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, I praise and extol and honor the king of heaven for all of his works are right his ways are just and those who walk in pride he is able to humble so you'll note here that nebuchadnezzar losing the mind of a man and giving being given the mind of an animal an ox that was a judgment of god against Nebuchadnezzar because of his pride and his arrogance and his refusal to worship the one true God and instead worship himself like the devil. And God humbles the proud, by the way. So you'll note that in scripture, we don't have any um, examples of, well, an ox anointing that is a good thing. But here Patricia King claims that she is here in this video to reveal the ox anointing. And an anointing, an anointed one is a Christos. So she has been anointed with a judgment from God, clearly, I think. It kicked me, and I could feel the, the, um, the hit of the kick. I literally felt the hit of it in my side. And uh, they were mocking me, saying, oh, yeah, that, that old stupid old ox. And I remember thinking, of course, I'm... I'm I'm dirty, I'm dusty because I'm working in the field for my master. And, you know, I have to be kind of like the shape I am to be able to pull this plow. And I was, I was trying to think, why, why don't they understand who I am? Why don't they understand that I've kind of got to be big and a bit awkward because of what I, I'm called to do? And, and, you know, and, and I am dusty because I'm out in the field. And, you know, I was, I was, I was trying to reconcile with myself what was going on, but they just kept, you know, mocking and kicking and, you know, uh, persecuting actually. But I knew that she was persecuted for being an ox. I had to keep my focus, that I couldn't be concerned about what they were saying. I had to just keep plowing this ground and I could feel it get harder and harder and harder, you know, and the mocking got more and the, the kicking got more. And then I was going through the field and I, I, I got to a point where I felt I couldn't go on anymore. That I feel tired and I don't know if I can make it. And I was discouraged, you know, and the weight of the plow seemed heavier than ever. 
This is all about the oxen. Right and the resistance from the soil itself felt stronger than ever. And I thought, I don't know if I can make it. But I knew that my master needed me to finish the course. And then I looked up and there I could see in front of me the cross. And I knew that it was my destination. I, I looked at it and I thought, that's what oxes belong there, you know? And, and. <laughs> What on earth? If I could just make it a little bit further, I would, I would go to my destination. And so I pulled, I thought, for the sake of the mass. This has nothing to do with scripture, by the way. I'm going to pull, and I finally made it to the cross, and my head hit the cross, and I fell down, and I just began to weep because I knew that I'd been given grace to finish the course. A weeping ox. Huh? Now, no one was there with me. I was alone, and, and I, it didn't matter. Teller of tall tales, indeed. To me that no one understood the journey, that no one understood the, the assignment I had, but I was satisfied that I'd done what the Master required. When I came out of that vision, the Lord said, Behold the Apostle. Behold the Apostle. Oh, this was her apostolic anointing? She's a false Christ. And I realized what he was doing. He was showing me the function of the apostle. The apostle has to go into the place of the hard ground and plow through and, and you know, build foundations for others to build upon. And, and, um, and I knew that it wasn't an easy role, that it was a, a role that many wouldn't understand and, and that many would even mock and ridicule. And that, that it was going to be hard work for the apostle as a true apostle. It wasn't just a title sitting in a big chair and being, you know, the big cheese. It was something that it was groundbreaking, holding, you know, just walking through everything that had to be done. And when I came out of it, I knew inside that that was true apostolic oil, the, the anointing of the ox. True apostolic oil. She has received the ox anointing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go back and play the part that I missed. I skipped it on purpose because I want you to hear what she says. So clearly we can say now with absolute authority that Patricia King is a not only a false prophet, she's a false Christ. She's claiming to have a special apostolic ox anointing. And here it is good to note that uh, that we have another person in the NAR who is at least being honest. And that is is that uh, she's not a continuationist, she's a restorationist. Here, here are the part that I skipped. Today I have a message on the ox anointing. And I'd like you to turn in your Bibles if you have them to... Which is a clever way for her to say she's an apostle. Ephesians 4. And it says in verse 11, He gave some as apostles and some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. Ephesians 2.20 makes it clear that the, the household of God is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. The apostles and prophets are still doing their work today in Scripture. That's where their messages are recorded. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. And so we see here that the fivefold ministry gifts, as list listed here, are not only to equip the saints for the work of kingdom ministry, but it's to enable us, all of that together is to enable us to come into to the full measure of the stature of Christ. In other words, that we'll, we'll look like him, we'll talk like him, we'll walk like him, we'll be like him. So that is the purpose, um, primarily, of the fivefold ministry gifts, is to equip us for the ministry so that everyone can come into the fullness of all that Christ is. So I want to talk specifically today about the apostolic anointing, and I know... The apostolic anointing, the ox anointing, her claiming that she is, well, she has the special ox apostolic anointing. That makes her a false Christ. The word apostolic and the word apostle is a very big subject these days, and it's actually very controversial. And in church history, we have not actually had, since the book of Acts, we have not actually had in the church the apostles and the prophets um, holding their office like we have in this hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's a true, not continuationist restorationist she's at least honest god has restored these ministry gifts to the church and this so she's claiming that god has restored the office of apostle and she guess what has received from jesus 
The apostolic ox anointing is the time when the apostolic ministry is being restored to the church, most definitely. And it is an office so that the whole body can become apostolic. Apostolic means sent one or the first one in, the ones that go before and build the structures. And so um, they are serving. If the apostles are the first ones in, Christianity has been around for 2,000 years. Um, why would we need somebody more to be the first ones in? Doesn't make any sense. So you get the idea here. And the, the basic premise here, and the basic concept here is that Jesus warns us. And, uh, and coming back to our opening text on this in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 24. Pseudo Christoi, false Christ and false prophets will arise in the last days and perform signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Jesus says, See, I've told you beforehand. So when you hear somebody in the NAR, the charismatic movement or the Pentecostal movement, talking about anointings, uh, the seer anointing, the ox anointing, the Hannah anointing, name the anointing, they are claiming to be trafficking in anointings, which means that the people receiving these so-called anointings would be considered Christoi, Christs. That's what a Christ is, an anointed one. In fact, all this talk of anointing that's going on in the NAR and the charismatic movements, it's a fulfillment of Jesus's prophecy that in the days before his return, that there'll be a proliferation of false Christ. So anyone claiming to have an anointing today, claiming to be an anointed one, they are false Christs, especially Patricia King and her ox anointing. I, I think you get the idea. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in the description. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.